Okay, what happens? What is going to, um, what will air do if it's exposed to a pressure gradient? In our conversation, we're going to look at, um, we're pretty much consistently going to be use the units, millimeters of mercury, to describe pressures. We did that with blood pressure. We're going to keep the same units for uh, breathing and the pressures involved in ventilation. But the thing that I want you to get clear before we even start is if there is a pressure gradient, what direction will air molecules move? Will they move to lower pressures or will they move to higher pressures? Well, I can give you a whole bunch of visuals on that as well. The fact is that air molecules will move from a high pressure area to a low pressure area. And if you create a pressure gradient, you can actually facilitate movement of air. In fact, that's all wind is. Wind is air, our atmosphere, moving from a high pressure zone to a low pressure zone. And if you are a weather person, you can anticipate and analyze and, like, understand all that. High pressure and low pressure zones exist in your respiratory system. And for orientation, before we begin assigning pressures to our thoracic cavity, we have to accept one thing first, and that is this. Atmospheric pressure, look, I'm drawing my respiratory system again, except I'm not keeping it, so I don't even know why I'm involved, whatever. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> The bottom line is I'm drawing you this because I want you to appreciate the fact that this is your mouth. That's your mouth. And your mouth is open to what? The atmosphere. So out here is the atmosphere. And in this whole conversation, we are going to set atmospheric pressure to zero. Remember how we did that with um, action potentials? For, for determining the membrane potential, we set the external environment, the extracellular fluid, we set that at zero, and then we compared what was going on inside the cell. We used that for our comparison, but we set the outside to zero, and then everything was just relative to that. We're just going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to set atmospheric pressure to zero. Therefore, you tell me right now, if you want air to go into the trachea, if you want air to go into the lungs, what are you going to have to create inside the lungs? You want air to move. Pressure out here in the air is just automatically set at zero. We're just going to norm it at zero. How can we get it to move? If somehow we can create a low pressure zone, in the alveoli, that will cause air molecules to move from high pressure, zero, to lower pressure, negative. Can you accept that so far? Can you feel like, yeah, okay, that kind of works for me. I can visualize how that would be. If I wanted to get the air out again, what would you do? Dude, just increase the pressure inside the alveoli. The question is, how do we do that? Shall we go look at how it is done? Okay, we're coming back to this one that took me a little bit longer to create, and we'll just reuse it. Now look, we're starting out with zero pressure outside. That's my atmospheric pressure, and we're setting it at zero. Stop your breath. Don't stop breathing. I mean, do stop breathing. That's what I'm asking you to do, but just stop the breath. There's no breathing in or out, right? Just keep it still. When it's still, what I'm telling you is that the pressure in your lungs is equal to the pressure in the atmosphere. If it wasn't, this is the, accept this. Write it down. I'm not going to, but you are. Just pause me, whatever. Write it down. If the pressure inside the lungs is equal to atmospheric pressure, 
there is going to be no movement of air. If I want air to move, I have to change pressures, period. That's it. I happen to know Boyle's Law, and this is going to be easy because all I'm going to do, you watch this, you watch and learn. All I'm going to do, I can do this, I just have to pick a color. Maybe we'll go with a brighter red. I'm going to contract my diaphragm. Look at this, you guys. What did I just do to the volume of my chest cavity? What did I just do to it when I contracted my diaphragm? Number one, contract diaphragm. That says diaphragm. Sorry about that. Consequences of contracting your diaphragm, you increased volume of the thoracic cavity. This is very confusing. Ignore that arrow. That was just saying, what happens if you do this? Well, I contract my diaphragm. The volume of my thoracic cavity increased. Now I have this giant volume. What happens to the pressure inside there? If I increase the, the volume, my pressure decreases. Pressure where? Well, what I'm going to tell you is the pressure in this plural space, and it's actually called inter, intrapleural pressure. And I'm going to write it in, oh gosh, maybe orange. Intra-plural pressure. So contract your diaphragm. Increase the volume of your chest cavity. Decrease intrapleural pressure. That's actually really straightforward, isn't it? Intrapleural pressure will decrease. Now, here's the interesting thing. In this space right here, even at rest, this space has a negative pressure, even at rest. It has, I think it starts with um, negative 2. That's interesting. At rest, it's negative 2, which means what kind of chronically happens in your lungs? Since this is a higher pressure, guess what? You chronically kind of sort of have your lungs inflated. Can you visualize that? Because this is a higher pressure zone than this interpleural space. And so the molecules are actually, they're going to push and they're going to try to get into that space because it's a low pressure zone. That keeps your lung inflated. Can you totally visualize that? Now, if I contract my diaphragm, all of a sudden I've increased the volume of my intrapleural space and I've decreased my pressure even more. Now, upon contracting the diaphragm, my pressure actually drops probably to like negative 6. What does that do? Dude, that sucks air in. When you relax and you decrease the volume of that space, what's that going to do? I decrease the volume by relaxing my diaphragm. That's going to increase the pressure. And where is the air going to go? Peace out. It's going to go out. In fact, the pressure inside when you contract, it actually in your alveolus goes up to like 1. Well, that's huge. It's not that huge. But if my pressure is 1, then the air is going to flow out. If I wanted to increase the pressure inside there anymore, I wanted to make it 5, I'm going to go crazy, man. I'm going to have an interpol, I mean, an alveolar pressure of 5 millimeters of mercury compared to the external environment. <sighs> All that means is I just blow out air faster. The air moves faster from this high pressure zone to this low pressure zone. I want to breathe in fast, increase the volume of my chest cavity, 
air just comes right in. It's not really, it, it's coming in down its pressure gradient, which I guess kind of is what sucking is. That's how you breathe, my friends. Is it all the diaphragm? Is the diaphragm the only thing responsible for changing the volume of your chest cavity? No. Your ribs, actually, with the help of your intercostal muscles, your ribs change shape as well. And your, when those intercostals um, contract, they change the positioning of your ribs, and as they do that, that increases the volume of your chest cavity or your thoracic cavity as well. Both of those factors working together um, result in breathing. Now, look, I think I have, no, what? I don't? Dude, that's messed up. There is an excellent visual, and in fact, you should just go check it out. It's figure 1711 in your textbook, and um, looks like it's on page 581. Go check that thing out, and it probably will be some sort of fun application activity in lecture, especially if somebody emails me and reminds me that I said that. Okay, I think we're good with breathing. Oh, I've got one application for you, my friends. My friends, I'm not going to tell you the answer. I'll tell you the answer in lecture. What happens if you eliminate this negative interpleural pressure? What would happen if, for example, watch this. Does anybody know what that sound was? Does anybody know what this thing is? Um, that's a knife, and I am knifing. <laughs> I live with lots of Y chromosomes. It should be a lightsaber. <laughs> and I just stabbed this person, lightsabers, whatever. If I broke through the chest cavity and I changed this negative interpleural pressure, what are the results of that? What are the consequences? We'll talk about that in lecture two. Bye-bye. <laughs>